Madame Web, more like Madame Flub. <laughs> oh, hello, and welcome to The Load In, a United Theatre podcast with me, your host, Lee Metzger, coming to you live from the belly of a whale. Today we're going to be talking about some things that are happening in March, and then at the end I'm going to give you my special and specific review of Adam Webb, a movie about Dakota Johnson running a car into a man. So stick around to the end to hear more about that. But for now, let's dive in to the load-in. Uh, so today we're only going to be talking about March, March-specific things. I'm not going to talk about all of them because some of them are already sold out. So if I'm not talking about them that must mean they're either sold out or about to be sold out. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is our paint and sip event. Uh, this is a paint night. If you're familiar with these, then you don't need to listen to this part. It's a, uh, a local artist, Helen Roy, comes in and uh, teaches you how to paint. I'll put what you'll be painting right here. Um, it's a really lovely evening. Starts at 6.30. We've got a full bar with um, wine and beer and also mocktails as well. Uh, soda, soft drinks, whatever you need. And of course, popcorn. We all love popcorn. Um, so that's going to be a really fun event. This one also, there's only like 16 spots. So if it's something that you think you might be interested in, definitely get your tickets while you have the chance. Because as I said, limited amount of seats. And listen, and listen, painting is a pretty hot ticket around here. So if you want to get in on the ground floor, here's your chance. Next event we have is on March 9th, we'll uh, be welcoming Paul Mercurio, um, a, a comedian from The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Uh, he's got a bunch of accolades in that kind of area. He worked on The Daily Show, worked on Colbert Rapport, and he's going to be coming in to do his very unique show called Permission to Speak. This is a very interactive show with, where uh, Paul will call up willing members of the audience to come up on stage and share a story. He'll ask some questions about you. And it's a very fun and nice um, evening um, where you kind of learn a little bit about yourselves and learn about the community that, that you're in and the rest of the audience that's there. Um, Paul is very funny. He's a very charming man. So this is going to be a really fun event. Um, Paul himself is a Emmy and Peabody award winning comedian and writer and actor. So this is going to be a really fun event. Definitely get your tickets for this one. I'm realizing that my glasses are pretty reflective. I hope that that's not been too distracting outside of this pretty dope drip I've got today. Whatever. Now, on the 16th of March, the day before St. Paddy's Day, we'll be having our Dance United, our second annual Dance United, um, put on by the Friends of the United. This is a really cool and unique event where you learn, um, it's, a, it's a multi-hour event. In the first hour, you learn um, just a quick rundown of swing dance uh, taught by local dance instructor Jody Rudnick. This event will feature the Catnip Junkies, um, a local swing band. And this event is sponsored by Ed French and Son Asphalt Paving, um, the Wine Store, and McQuaid's Marketplace. So it's a got a big community footprint here. Um, this is this is a, this event sold out last year. It's super fun. Um, it, it, you don't have you can be a seasoned dancer, or you could never have even danced before. You could be from that town, from Footloose. Um, I think that's what that movie was about. Or am I thinking of Red Dawn? I don't think I'm thinking of Red Dawn. Um, I think I'm thinking of Red Dawn now. Then on March 21st, we have the Traveling McCorries. Now, this is a massive show. Uh, the Traveling McCorries are a Grammy Award winning bluegrass band. Their bluegrass roots go back to Del McCory, who was a pretty famous bluegrass um, artist from days of yore. Uh, and his two sons, along with some other fellows, um, are performing in this band, and it's going to be a great show. And so the Traveling McCoury's have won a Grammy for the Best Bluegrass Album in uh, 2019. So they're like, you know, 
they're world class. So get your tickets for this. It's going to be fun. And then last thing I want to talk about, Hyposium. So Hyposium is our lecture series um, hosted by Max Finance. Now, Max Finance is what's called a master Cicerone. And if you don't know what a Cicerone is, that is someone who is accredited um, by a, uh, a world organization to be an expert in beer. Um, for wine, it would be called a sommelier. Um, now, Max is a master Cicerone, which there's only 28 of those in the world and only one other in New England. So um, he is he brings his expertise and his in- intelligence with the, uh, in regards to this this uh, subject to us here at the United Theater and w- with the intent to share with our community. Um, so if you're into beer, if you're into craft beer, this is an incredible opportunity to talk to somebody who is a um, on the forefront of the um, the uh, science and the art behind craft beer. So Hyposium is a, is a uh, it's a series of four lectures. The first one beginning on March twenty second. Um, just March twenty second is the building blocks of beer. So your four main ingredients: um, grain, yeast, hops, and water. Uh, you'll be learning about these building blocks of beer while also tasting beer. So it's a it's a kind of a um, libation tour through the building blocks of beer. It's going to be super fun. Um, there's a limited amount of seating on, on that as well. So make sure to get your tickets um, early uh, for this, which is definitely going to sell out. It's going to be a, a super fun event. Uh, obviously, 21 plus. And that's it that I'm going to be talking about today for events coming up. Uh, if you've noticed, I didn't talk about Soupy Fest because it is sold out. It has been sold out. Um, but we are still taking submissions. If you want your family's Soupy to be judged um, and perhaps be crowned the victor, best Soupy in Westerly, which we all know is the Soupy capital of the world, you still have the opportunity to do that. But that's it for this portion of the load-in. So if you want to stick around to this second portion where I talk about Madame Webb, uh, then you're welcome to, and I'm happy to see you on the other side of this break. So, Madame Webb, um, Madame, more like losing my damn mind. Um, I uh, let's talk about it. First and foremost, um, they did not deserve the amount of hate that uh, people were giving this this movie. Um, it sure it wasn't good, but it was a lot better than people made it seem. Um, I was very, very surprised uh, how how vitriolic it was. Um, but once I sat down to watch it, I was happily happily surprised, and I'll tell you why. Um, before I get ahead of myself, though, the first act, holy butt. Um, that was some very, very terrible writing. The uh, dialogue was just was just really, really rough. Um, there's a thing in filmmaking called show don't tell and a lot and a hallmark of bad movies is when the words that their characters are saying to each other are just like their motivations or their inner ideas and sometimes there is power in doing that or like you can do it in a fun and interesting way which makes it feel fun and interesting but in this movie it was just like it was clear that the filmmakers don't trust us enough as audience members to watch a scene play out, understand what's happening and then internalize and think about, Oh, okay. So this is probably what's going on by using context clues, acting choices and a little bit of dialogue. Um, but some movies like the, the best movies I've seen are ones that allow that let the audience, they kind of leave the audience alone. They tell the story and let the audience pick up what they're picking down or putting down. And hopefully in the meantime, um, they just focus on 
making something look and sound and um, feel beautiful and interesting. And I think that one of the main issues that Madam Web had was they didn't trust the audience. I also think they didn't trust themselves enough. I think that a lot of movies fail where they try to appeal to everyone instead of just telling their story the way that they wanted to tell it. I think Captain Marvel or the Marvels is a movie that fell victim to this where they were trying to not turn off um, certain members of their audience. So um, the studio came in with a machete and was like, get rid of all this original thought and replace it with stuff that's going to appeal to the lowest common denominator. And I think that uh, lost out a lot because of that. Now, this movie, Madam Web, I feel like they had a little bit more autonomy. Maybe it's because the studio just didn't give, did, didn't care enough about it. Maybe they were just like, whatever, do whatever you want. Um, but once we got out of the first act um, and got over that exposition dump in the beginning and the movie actually began and we focused on Cassandra Webb, Dakota Johnson's character, it really opened up a lot. No way. I ran out of space on my other camera, so now I'm going to be talking to you. Um, all that to say, uh, the movie was was pretty bad, but it was still super fun. Like I, I I don't think I would I don't think I would set out to go watch it again by myself. But if someone else wanted to go see it, I think I'd go with them. Um, uh, it it was an entertaining movie, and outside of like the really really tough dialogue sometimes, and the the villain. Um, the villain is just like it's so tough to feel invested in a movie and give a shit about a villain when you don't know anything about them outside of the fact that they are the bad guy therefore they're going to do the things that are bad so that our heroes can overcome them and it was really really tough to care about this man when I don't know any of his friends I don't know any of his families I don't know what he does for a work I don't I don't know what he does for a job I've never I've I've only seen two walls of his apartment um, I only know one other person who he hires which is a person who is like again only there for exposition and only there to move the plot along and to be a foil for the protagonist to work against but I don't give a shit about this guy and that's because I don't know anything about them um, and I think if I were to if I were to figure out a way to fix this movie fix this movie and I listen <laughs> take it with a grain of salt I've never made a movie I uh, I'm, I'm barely a podcaster and um, and it's how easy it is for for me to to throw to throw um, tomatoes at something a piece of work that someone actually did and created a whole team all that being said, something that could be done to make this movie better would be um, hide the villain. If your villain isn't very compelling, just keep him off screen. Um, let us find out, let, like use that to play into the horror or the terror of this movie because that's basically what this movie is. It is a, it's like Final Destination with um, Nightmare on Elm Street. There is this like... <laughs> There is this, or maybe not Nightmare on Elm Street, maybe it follows. Like, there is always this thing that is plotting towards the our protagonist, and they have to escape it by continually moving. Um, and that's fine. Um, that's okay. That is enough to carry a movie, much more than a bland villain. Like, every time it cut to him, I was like, well, perfect time to go get a, go get another popcorn. Because this person is not going to say anything of consequence outside of, I'm mad at these people. I'm going to go kill them. And if that's all your villain is doing, then we don't need to see that. Be Jason, you know? Be hiding in plotting and slowly walking in a really ugly pair of coveralls. And that's enough. All that being said, I think the movie was much better than people thought it uh, made it out to be. I think it's got like a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. I would give this movie a strong four, a week five out of 10. I would definitely go see it again with the right 
person if they wanted to see it. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to see it, but um, I think it is. Uh, I think it's worthy of a of a second watch. I don't think I missed anything on the first time around, but I would definitely watch this movie again. So if you haven't seen Madam Web, I recommend going out and checking it out. Um, I think you're going to have a good time once you get past the first 20 to 30 minutes. And I'll just say, I think Dakota Johnson did a good job. Sure, she's a little wooden, but that's kind of her like shtick. Like, you don't hire Tom Hanks to play a Caribbean gangster. You hire Tom Hanks to play his role. Same with Dakota Johnson. Hiring Dakota Johnson to play a misanthrope who is has a dry sense of humor and has to learn how to, um, you know, become, uh, has to discover her ability to be caring and loving. And I think that's the right person to hire because they can convincingly make that transition. So besmirching her for being wooden, I think is just missing the point a little bit. Um, but all that to all that to say, five out of ten. I recommend it. Um, and that is the end of the show. So thank you so much for coming here and listening to me talk about this movie that I liked. Um, and uh, I look forward to sharing my my thoughts on other movies down the road. Um, so this is the load in. I'm Lee Metzger. I got to get back to work. I've almost figured out how to solve global warming. Um, But I've got a little bit more work to do. So, goodbye. Ooh, getting hot out there. Another scorcher. Thanks for tuning in to the United Theatre Podcast Network. If you enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to subscribe to our show so you never miss an episode. And if you could take a moment to leave a review, we'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us create content that you love. So hit that subscribe button and leave us a review, and we'll see you on the next episode.